You're gonna get with me for the video? Yeah. You can close it so people can see. Hi there, this is Olivia continuing my creative process playlist. And uh, at this point, we're still very much at the beginning, but I know I've already given you guys like so many directions. Like, do this, research that, no, don't do that. No, actually, maybe consider this and that. And then, hmm, yeah, think for yourself, make your own decisions. Uh, listen to your hearts. Like, I know, and <laughs> it's, it's a lot. So this is the part where you may start to feel stuck. And uh, I'll tell you, I have no clue what that's like. No, like, you know why, why I think I'm a good teacher? Because I'm extremely dumb. Wait, no, 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 no. Okay, let me explain. So whatever dumb shit people bring to me, I've done worse. So I have all this experience to catch you before you take it too far. And yeah, you never need to feel embarrassed in front of me because whatever it is, I've done worse. So yeah. Um, anywho, things to consider before I become an even bigger pain in the ass is number one. Now is the part where you will really have to have faith in yourself. Just like I'm having the audacity to be making these videos and teaching the stuff like online for free on YouTube and solo because I'm the one writing the scripts, filming, editing, everything. Like today I even tried to do like special makeup and I create like a fancy character because, you know, nobody else has done this except for every drag queen on YouTube and Mark Jacobs. But it's, it's always Mark Jacobs. You can miss that. Yes, bitch. Everything, every idea you've ever had has already <laughs> been done by someone else with a lot more skills and sometimes a lot more money. So you still want to do this? Here's the deal, um, you've got to stop comparing yourself to these really big brands with really big budgets. You like stop for a moment looking for inspiration if you're just going to feel like extremely intimidated by legendary designers that already have like decades of experience, bodies of work that are shown in museums or like and sometimes like these designers are backed by multi billion 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 I said billion dollar conglomerates so, like chill don't put that much pressure on yourself and also stop reading inspirational stories of people that started from like total shit and now we're extremely successful just stop and look at what's right in front of you Right now it's my cat's blanket. <laughs> um, number two, this is the part where in most schools, if you show some nice collages, that's enough for the teachers to go like, wow, wow, so modern, look at this, so modern, wow. And um, you'd be all set to make some fashion illustrations with the, the little flat sketch on the side. But, you know, if you're following me, I'm going to be annoying and I won't let you jump to the, like, I won't let you skip to the conclusion just yet. So first, we need to talk about design development. Yay! And um, I, I call it design development because that's the expression I learned. And, uh, you know, it's useful. You got to name things so you can do verbal communication. And... Um, I also think it's helpful to think in terms of different stages in a way that keeps you moving but without like jumping the gun and uh, but also without saying, yeah, I'm stuck and I don't know what to do. 
And if you're like me and you're kind of chaotic and you can't get all conceptual, you can't get like a, a concept uh, right from the, the beginning, then you should feel really excited about this part because this is when you're, you're going to learn by doing here. Like you're going to look at your research, then you're going to do stuff with like you're going to paint, you're going to draw, you're going to work with fabric. And uh, then you take a step back, look at it, and maybe you see like, okay, there's a lot of mess, but ah, okay, make something a little bit more interesting looking here. And uh, I guess I can go this way. And I guess this is what my project is about. Oh. Um, but in practical terms, what exactly can you do for this stage? Simple. You can research whatever you want. You can go super crazy on your collages. Now, what do you need in order to make clothes? And I have great news for you. This step has nothing to do with being a master pattern cutter, nothing to do with being like a super skilled seamstress, because we're still making studies at this stage. And the trick here is to be really obvious so um yeah let me pull back my basic ass collage that i did to, as an example for the last video and uh like really even if i say this is a very basic collage with pictures from a really basic ass google search there are elements here that can be explored and brought to real life so your job from now on is to not shy away from your own research. Okay, so this part is not scripted. <laughs> I hope I don't ramble. Um, okay, looking at this collage, I think most people would probably just assume that they had to buy denim fabric. And uh, if you just buy denim fabric, it's not gonna look like this. Because this, like you can see that it's very distressed already so you would think like oh i need to research denim washes denim washes are a science in itself um and then if you think oh, okay so i'll go to the fabric shop and look for prints like this fabric shops they don't usually have like maybe you have access to to better stuff but like most fabric shops will have stuff like this. So um, if this is still studies and you don't have to go and go straight to cutting and making this, because if you take this to a seamstress also, she's going to go about like the same way. And uh, you can't really blame her if you like if you give her this drawing and she gets back to you with something that looks like a Bershka denim jacket. So um, yeah, how we can how can you go about developing each detail of this not this look this collage? So this very big like big jacket with the round shoulders it looks like it has uh, if you zoom in you can see the distressed sleeves here you can see that it's got some some sort of padding inside. So instead of trying to create a denim jacket from scratch you could go to the thrift store uh, because those are uh, the thrift shops always have like super oversized stuff that could fit like my my uncle and um, what if you got one of these and instead of thinking that oh i have to tailor it so if you just put it on a a, a much like a skinny friend how would it look like and then you can see like if you like if you will form this really bulk um, shape here this round shoulder here or if you're gonna have to make some like shoulder pads and put inside and um, like this is not a final thing so you don't need to worry about like is the fabric gonna look exactly like that if you want something distressed you can make your own experiments with fabric and you'll make like teeny tiny ones you don't need to make like the whole jacket you don't need to 
oh, now I need to send this jacket to a, uh, a denim washing factory. I forgot the name of that. Um, and then we have these pleated skirts. So here you can, like I'm, I'm calling this a pleated skirt, but it could be something else more exciting than that. Um, also, like if you don't know how to make the pleated skirts, you can either, like this is a part where, okay, use some paper and first you make like, here, I'm trying to not fold all the way through because this like if you look at it it's looking kind of rounded so just be really basic and do something really simple and see like would it become like something rounded or do i need to look into something else maybe um do you know those like i thought you could look into like bundt cake and uh don't, don't wait no don't like the tray costs a lot of money and this one's like 50 euros but you can look at this and try to recreate these like this very 3d skirts um with paper or then if paper is not working and you're just thinking ah oh, then try another material try something else and then we come look at this this bit here with the prints okay what if you wanted to like create prints similar to that then you're gonna have to dedicate a few pages to to study um like what is what is going on here so it's a, a very dark background and like these like there's a, the flowers the cherry blossoms in one side and uh, these clouds they call it like water puddles or something um elements on the other side so you can go and explore this like how like um and here you you're gonna need a little bit more research to like complement okay there's the heart bag and uh, does it like, does it need to to be a bag like you can start with something really small to explore the textures because this is looking like satin but it's probably uh, something thick because it's it's pleated like it's not really gathered and like ooh, or just a little like flimsy thing it's looking like the pleats are looking somewhat stiff so you can look at like what sort of material you can look into to to form this texture and uh, then around it it looks like it has some sort of lace and what if you don't have access to like those vintage lace trims that only have like those cotton laces with um, with the blue ribbon but if you don't have access to this what else can you like what can you do yourself you can um, customize it using just markers you can just paint the fabric with markers because you don't need to worry about like washing it for now you, you can always perfect it later or you can use like, like if you see my watercolor thing um your, your art supplies should look like this it should look a little bit dirty you're just like trying things and you can polish them later uh so yeah just by showing <laughs> like just by talking about examples of what you can do my desk is already a little bit messy um and yours uh, is probably gonna look even worse because you're gonna do the actual things and um in the next videos, I am going to go back to my oral portfolio just so I'm not like just like shouting like random generic suggestions of what you can do. And then I can talk about the separate things you can do as part of your design development, like fabric and color research and textile samples, 3D work on the, on the stand on the mannequin 
uh, working with ready-made garments that you buy from the thrift shop for maximum five euros, keep your budget low. And, uh, and then once you work uh, on the sand or you can create like uh, separate garment parts that you can uh, move around instead of just calling, oh, a sleeve's a sleeve, a skirt's a skirt, and that's it, end of story. Oh, and of course, um, I'm going to talk about using drawing and sketching to fill in the gaps and imagine variations. So you can start to figure out what your rough studies will be as final looks. So see you in the next video. Until then, stay dumb, stay obvious. And uh, if you want me to shake off the, the stuckness out of you, you already know it, check out my mentorship sessions on my website. And uh, bye. 70% of my job as a mentor is repeating myself. It's, it's becoming, this is becoming very clear. Like I know it's normal, but at the same time, I wonder how I am.